Hello, my beautiful diamond. Sheila True Love here with you. This is a wonderful clip that I found that I thought would prove to be beneficial, not only for men, but also to help women who didn't know how to say it. But this is like exactly what a lot of women are feeling right now. And maybe a lot of men are not as horrible as we, a lot of us think they are. I don't think all men are horrible, though I really don't. There are some good men out there who believe in God and Christ and take God and Christ seriously. But anyway, without further ado, check this out. Okay, hey, we going to the gym. I want to say this to the men so y'all can better understand what's really going on with us women. We are mentally, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually exhausted in motherhood, okay? The domestic labor falls on us, and we know that society goes by traditional roles, so a lot of the household deeds fall on the women. But for us, to, we constantly have to be attentive to what our children need when they're sick, when they look like they're about to become sick, their education, their emotional well-being, them learning, their coping skills. This is all of everything that we are paying attention to. On top of loving our children, we're trying to find spaces to be able to love ourselves. On top of trying to create safety for our children, we're looking for safety and security within ourselves. And sometimes because of all of the expectations and obligations and burdens and the load on us, we can't find that safety. So we turn to our partner and sometimes in our partner because they resent us so much for the transitions that we have faced in our motherhood we can't find safety with them as well so you have to be able to extend some type of grace and that's what we mean when we say we want to be seen we want to be heard we want to be understood we want to be validated we need you all because we understand that mentally psychologically men and women are not the same we understand that but as a partner we need you to try to step into our shoes see it through our eyes hear it through our ears feel it through our heart so you can better understand where we are coming from it's true there you have it men and women we know that we're not the same we are built differently but when it comes to these roles that you're supposed to women are supposed to cook and clean and men are supposed no 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 i'm not feeling none of that no you do what's best for your situation with it what's going on with your household like, I feel that it should be 50-50 in everything. Men do 50% of the cooking. Men do 50% of the cleaning. Men do 50% when it comes to raising these children. You do your laundry, I'll do mine. You know, or if you want to do 50-50 on the laundry, we can do that as well. And when it comes to the rent or the mortgage, women should do 50%. If he's making an, 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 a major more than you, then maybe the woman can do 70-30. But I always feel that if you don't pay, you can't stay. If you don't pay, you don't have the right to stay and you will have no say. Wow, I'm a poet. <laughs> I didn't know it. Yeah, if you don't pay your fair share, I don't care about what you're cleaning and cooking because he should be cleaning and cooking. And if he's not cleaning and cooking and like a lot of women say, well, he's not willing to do it. Well, then it's time for you to live separately. And now he's no longer having to do 50% of the cooking, cleaning, taking care of the kids. You know, he's on one week. You're on the one week. He's on a week. The week that he's on, you get a break. It's very simple. But when I hear women complaining about how overworked they are and how overloaded they are, who do you have to blame for that, uh, ladies? How, who do you have to blame, my beautiful diamonds? You have yourself to blame. You're the one who's permitting this. You have to put your foot down. Have a sit down talk. I hate it when people say, well, did you talk to him about it? Of course people talk to you about it. Well, I mean, don't you think that's the first thing we would have done? But you have, and I think it's important for you to have family meetings once a week or once every two weeks, Saturday. Every Saturday at whatever time works for your household and your family, you should be having these meetings so we can make sure, because I had those meetings. You see, I just had, I, I picked partners that just didn't want to live right and they didn't want to do right. They pretend that they wanted a Christian lifestyle, but they, they didn't. And I'm not a fanatic Christian. I'm not one of these martyrs. Like I'm dying for a cause. I'm suffering. Look at how I'm suffering. What? Because I'm a Christian. Like pathetic. No. And I'm not one of those 
fanatic. So I don't watch rated R movies. I don't wear makeup. I don't wear pants. You know, all that dumb nonsense. And I'm not like one of those modern, I'm not a modern day Pharisee. You want to see a modern day Pharisee? Just Jehovah's Witnesses. Though they're nothing but modern day Pharisees. I'm not like that either. I don't judge people. I have mercy. I know how to extend grace and understanding. And I use discernment and love. But like I'm saying, you know, uh, if people still insist on being in these relationships, I don't think anything is going to get better until the second coming of Christ. And I'm not a negative person. I'm a realist. You know, as long as we have all of these apps and this, these, these, these men have so many options. That's why they can't seem to get it together. They have way too many options out here now. And I was listening to Jolice and she was talking about the dating apps and she made some really valid points. You know, these, these, these dating apps, honey, if he's sitting up here meeting you on a dating app, what makes you think he's not going to use the same dating apps to get him a side piece because it's so easy. You know, I personally choose to stay single because you can't give me a guarantee that you're going to forever love bomb me because that's how they start out. They start love bombing you. Everything you do is right. They're happy with you. Uh, you're the, the, the best thing since the sl a slice of bread. You know, they, that, that's how they start off, but it never stays that way. And if you can't give me a guarantee, a guarantee that you're not going to change up on me and, and metamorphosize into a demon, I don't want to be bothered. And no one can give you that guarantee. The only guarantee we really have in life is we're going to pay taxes and we're going to make our transition. Those are the guarantees that we have. And I am not willing to play Russian roulette with my health and with my life. I'll go to the casino. I'll gamble. I will take a chance on, on a new place to dwell or what have you to some extent, whatever, because I'm kind of like, oh, but I'll take a chance. <laughs> but when it comes to my health, my well-being, and when it comes to my life, those are things I'm not going to play Russian roulette with. If you don't know what Russian roulette is, go on YouTube. What is Russian roulette? Go on Google and check out what Russian roulette is. I'm not doing it. I value myself too much. I have a son. I have a daughter. I have grandchildren who someday may need me. I've got to take care of Sheila True Love so that I will be able to be there for my loved ones. My girlfriend, Teresa. That's my bestie. She may need me someday. My other bestie, Amparo. Anna, I have to make sure I take care of Sheila so I could be there to take care of the ones who may need me down the road because I know they always got my back and it's not even for that. I do it because I love their personality. I love their character. I like the way they see life. I like their morals. I love their values. That's the reason why I'm still tight with my besties. We, and we're spiritually connected. That's how we managed to last for 47 years. 47 years with my besties. And I was only married, the, 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 the second one. I was with that man. I was with him for 11 years. Gregory, I was with him for, what, eight, nine years, eight or nine years. My first husband, my children's father, seven years. My besties have lasted longer than these relationships. But anyway, like this lady said, please understand where we're coming from. I want to say this really? to the men so y'all can better understand what's really going on with us women. We are mentally, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually exhausted in motherhood, okay? The domestic labor falls on us, and we know that society goes by traditional roles, so a lot of the household deeds fall on the women. But for us to, we constantly... You know, that's one thing also. If you're a Christian, the Bible says you're not supposed to be no part of the world. So you're not supposed to think like society. Society makes this fall on the women. You're not supposed to be thinking like the world anyway. So that's enough. That's where you went wrong. But like I said, ladies, do what's best for your household and for your situation. Don't put up with no abuse. Please don't put up with it because that's constantly rewarding them and they don't say, see any reason to change. I love you. Jehovah loves you. 
and so does Jesus. 